You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Remember the Flowers. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, guys. Please sit back and enjoy. I'll entertain you, and let's just jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> I sit up and get myself together, briefly going over everything concrete. The alley, my memories, and Cooper. Someone left me in that alley, and I, I guess for at least a day or two. I wonder why they didn't come back for me. My memories come in at random times, uh, most are brief flashes. I thought sleeping would trigger long mem longer memories, but last night I didn't remember anything. I hope they're not random. I'd like to find a concrete strategy to get them back. As for Cooper, he's kind of an asshole. He's also taking care of me. I don't really know what to make of him. I still don't trust him yet fully, but because he's way too secretive. The wolf has his moments, though, I'll give him that. I look around his apartment, particularly at those crates. There's a chance something in there could be useful. He said it was mostly junk, but one man's trash is another man's treasure. Ugh, I'm already becoming a dumpster diver. I don't know how he lives like this. He clearly makes some kind of money. He tells me he's an escort. Kind of. From context clues, I'd say he's more of a mercenary, a desperate one at that. But taking a job to bring an amnesiac man home seems bottom of the barrel. I chuckle to myself over the absurdity of the situation we both found, we both found ourselves in. And I stop and think about the situation itself again, with more scrutiny. Cooper says that he was able to find me from my blood, which I guess makes sense. He had his gun up, so maybe he thought an assailant was still around. This all happened a little too quickly, though. The more I think about it, the creepier the situation looks. Cooper was adamant about not being caught by... guards. What would they be guarding? And they weren't cops. If anything, it'd make sense to make to take... It'd make sense to take me to some kind of a... some type of authority. Oh, God. Sneeze. <coughs> what? Jesus. Oh, Lord. I get up from the couch and start to pace around the room as I get deeper in my own theorizing. Things aren't adding up right. I don't think he's lying to me, but he's obviously not telling the whole truth, either. He wants to take me to resume, but what the hell is that? A sanctuary for humans, he says? Uh, whatever that means. I'm getting antsy again. What else do I do? What else do I know? The Axiom. If I could get my hands on it, I could probably search for all sorts of things. Wait, no. Cooper says he needs to register me in it. God damn it. My racing thoughts pick up, along with my pacing. Wait, the Axiom. He used that right after he found me. He got information from an employer. Information about me. I stop in my tracks. <gasps> dun, dun, dun! Wait a second. That motherfucker. That asshole knows so much more about me than I do. I bet that son of a bitch even knows my name. I go from pacing to speed walking and with rising annoyance. He has contacts who obviously know about me. How else would they identify me? Just a long, white-haired man with a lot of scars? Lots of people have scars. Cooper has scars, for God's sake. No, they had to have told him my name, and lots more about me. What's worse is that if I confront him, he'll just say it's classified. Imagine that, my own name being classified. I can't even be allowed that. God, what the fuck? My stamina starts to run out, and I flop back on the couch. I grab the cushion I was sleeping on the night before and just fucking scream into it. My little fit doesn't last long as I start to feel fatigued. I slump against the couch and laugh. Seriously, can't even tell me my own name! I sigh and feel defeated. Looking around, I feel some form of contempt for the wolf. I'm in his, I'm in his apartment, wearing his clothes, eating his food. At this point, I don't think it's hyperbole to say that he owns me. Part of me thinks that I'm overreacting, but due to the fact that he knows more about me than I do, I think I deserve to get a bit upset. You know what? No, he can clean up his own shit. I'm tired and weak. I don't know why I offered to help him. I cross my arms and sit up on the couch. Then I take a look around. <laughs> hmm. There's really not, not that much else to do around here. I tap my fingers on my knees. As tired as I am, I will admittedly be very bored just by sitting around here. I so desperately want to take a nap, but if I'm going to fix my sleep schedule, I should try and stay up. Ugh! I resign myself to my fate yet again, and make my way over to the crates Cooper left me. Okay, well, it's not like I'm doing this to help him. I'm doing this so, don't, so I don't go crazy with boredom. I nod as I've convinced myself. That aside, I inspect the crates. They look to be made of some kind of metal. Now, each one has a keypad on them, but the screens are all green. I assume that's because Cooper unlocked them for, for me. 
The ones in the alley look, fami look familiar, too. Must be a common means of storage around here. Either that or Cooper just yoinked these and took ownership. Wouldn't be surprised. I huff at that wolf and his living habits. In any case, they should keep me re-entertained for the coming hours. Not really thinking too much about the order, I just picked the first one on my left. The top pops up smoothly at the hinge. It kind of reminds me of a treasure chest. I'm a bit perplexed at the contents. Certainly not booty. I try to tip over the crate, but my arms aren't strong enough for that. Letting out a loud, annoyed groan, I just scoop up a few things and lay them on the floor. Look like scraps of bigger pieces of technology. There are hunks of metal galore and some pieces of tech I have no hope of comprehending. I'm starting to think uh, starting to think a bit off more than I can chew. I can't really organize anything if I don't know what they are. It just kind of looks like junk to me. Cooper's starting to look less like a wolf and more like a pack rat to me. I have to be careful moving these around. There's some sharp edges and exposed wires on some pieces. Because he didn't think this through. For a moment, the thought of using one of these long shards as a weapon crosses my mind. I shake my head. As desperate as I am, I'm not that stupid. Cooper could, Cooper would easily overpower me. I have to wonder if I ever had experience in self-defense. A memory pops up in my head of Diana absolutely crushing me in an exhibition match she suggested. I guess not. I sort them into two piles, parts and devices. Parts is mainly junk, but who knows? Cooper might need them for something. Not that I'm doing this for him, obviously. Ugh. Halfway through, I realized something. How am I going to organize these inside the crate itself? I can feel a headache on the rise. This is so stupid. I think that, but I keep going. At this rate, I'm almost looking forward to making it to resume. Probably more exciting than this, I chuckled myself. I feel like a kid who has dropped off in an abandoned daycare. I'm merely done with the contents of the box. As expected, most of it just looks like junk. However, something near the bottom catches my attention. I lean over to pick it up. This feels more like a tablet. A tablet I would have used, a bit clearly different. The screen itself looks like a black border with a completely transparent middle. The button on the sides, the button on the side, the buttons on the side are the only part of the contraption that clue me, that clue me in that it's some kind of screen. I shift to a crisscross position as I attempt to figure out how to operate it. Let's hope there's no passcode or anything. The buttons seem to work, but nothing pops up on the screen. Hmm. Who knows when this was charged last? Now that I think about it, there weren't many cables or cords in this box. The device doesn't seem to have a port for one to be inserted anyway. How does it function, then? I tap the screen mindlessly, trying to elicit some sort of response. What do I know about the technology here? I know Cooper's Axiom, but that's about it. Wait, his Axiom? It's solar-powered. He said, kind of, were his exact words. Maybe I just need to... I get up and walk to the only window in this place. Huh, I guess we're high up. Must be an actual apartment complex. I honestly thought this was some kind of ground-floor motel he found himself in. Musing aside, I hold the tablet thing aside against the window for a moment. Nothing happens, and I start to get discouraged. But then it beeps and lights up. I nearly drop it. The screen itself is almost too bright. The screen adjusts soon after, easing up on my eyes. I stare at it for a while. Sure enough, it needs a passcode, but the background is what's captivating me. There are five figures on the screen, Cooper being one of them. Wow, this must be old. He looks... he almost looks happy. He's being... he's being held to headlock by a bigger white tiger. Uh, the tiger is also headlocking someone else, a human. He looks like a rowdy guy. There's a hyena on the right. She seems to be egging him on. And finally, on the very left beside Cooper, there's a deep... there's a deer shaking his head. I'm kind of dumbfounded. Cooper obviously had a life, and I have to wonder what happened to it. I dare say he's blushing underneath that tiger's arm. Not that I blame him. He looks strange without his scars. This must have been from a while ago. Well, I guess this wasn't a total waste. I'm sure he'd be happy to have a memento like this. Water activated. Once again, I nearly drop the tablet as I hear something over the apparent apartment intercom. <laughs> Wait, water? Activated? That means I can finally take a shower! I gently set the tablet on the window on the windowsill to let it charge, and speed walk my way over to Cooper's bathroom, with a big smile plastered on my face. Oh boy, time to take a shower. It took me longer than I would have liked to clear out all the ammunition Cooper stored in the bathtub. Seriously, if he's resorted to using his bathroom like this, I really have to wonder what he keeps in his room. Even though I've worked up a good sweat moving everything, I don't mind. I feel like I've accomplished something. Now that I have a working shower to myself, I could care less, too. Inspecting the rest of the bathroom, there seems to be only two towels. I hope they're washed. I'm not going to risk smelling them, though. Blah! Now that I think about it, most of this looks like stuff we've had we, ha we had back at home. 
The idea of this reality being some kind of simulation crosses my mind again. Funnily enough, that would be the most logical explanation for everything happening right now. Though I've given up on waking up. Without, with some hesitation, I strip off my turtleneck, avoiding the mirror over the sink. Don't need anybody dis don't need any body dysmorphia right now. Hmm. A shower all. It's a shower all right, but I'm not exactly sure how to operate it. The faucet for the bath looks normal, and so does the shower head. But there are no handles or dials. It's basically just a wall of tile. I try knocking against the tiles to see if anything happens. Nothing, obviously. Man, what the fuck? I finally get the chance to shower, and I'm not even sure how to use it. Where's Cooper when you need him? Not that it happens often. Actually, I've needed him for every step of the way so far, but that's beside the point. Wait, that's it! I should try to put myself in Cooper's shoes to see how we'd go about this. Even though he doesn't wear shoes. I'm distracting myself again. I need to figure out how this damn thing works. Cooper seems to use his axiom for everything. Maybe there's a piece of technology in here that operates the shower. I turn, the I turn toward the sink, briefly getting startled by myself in the reflection. I still look like bloody hell. Oh well, these kinds of casual encounters of my appearance should help elevate future anxieties. At least that's what I'm telling myself. I shake my head to focus once more, and then I look through some of the nearly nearby cabinets. There are some things that look like toiletries, I think. Bottles and lotions, I guess those are also a universal concept. Some look like the canister Cooper kept his water in. Curious, I slide my finger at the top and smell the contents. It's kind of floral, I think it's shampoo. There's a decent amount in here, and I could definitely use a bit for my hair. Would he miss it? Actually, I have to wonder if he knew he had shampoo in the first place. Well, that was a nice find, but I still need a way to operate the shower. Rifling through the rest of the cabinets is fruitless. Though, there'd be some deodorant somewhere, but I... Well, there'd be some deodorant somewhere, but I guess that's more of a human thing. With the shampoo being my only boon, I close the cabinets and turn around. I look toward the mirror, and this time with more confidence. I choose not to dwell on the reflection as I stick my hand under the mirror itself and pull. The mirror moves open like a door. Huh, it's pretty old-timey to have a medicine cabinet like that. Although, I'm not exactly sure what constitutes as old-timey around these parts. Unlike the cabinets, this seems promising. There's a yellow, there's a, there's a yellow fur-covered brush along with some toothbrushes. Sadly, just canine toothbrushes, I doubt they do me much good. I don't even want to think about what canine toothpaste tastes like. And brushes aside, there's something that catches my eye. It looks like a smartphone. I pick it up and try to fiddle with it while still being cautious. Wouldn't want to blow anything up or something. To my surprise, it lights up almost instantly. If I'm right, it's exactly what I'm looking for. The screen has a gauge labeled water along with a slider at the bottom set, a bottom set in the middle, half blue and half red. Jeez, these guys need tablets just to use their shower? I can't tell if that's, that's if I can't tell if that's bougie or just lazy. I pause. Uh, probably both. Looking over the screen, it seems rudimentary enough. There's a big button that I'm guessing is the start button. As one does with big buttons, I press it. <laughs> yep, there you go. Now to just control the temperature. After a slight pause, the bathtub faucet starts pouring out water. I go to feel it, and it's lukewarm. I slide the, uh, the, I slide the assumed temperature slider left and right to gauge the feel. It changes temperature pretty fast. That's kind of cool. Although, unless the tablet's waterproof, I'm not sure how you'd adjust it mid-shower. I decide not to test it, just in case, and slide it to almost to the end of the red side. Oh boy. Steam starts filling the room as the faucet spews out hot water. There's another option that can be turned off and on. I tap it and the faucet stops before the shower head starts. Yep. Oh. Damn, look at that. Maybe I can be someone independent. I smile at my small accomplishment and set the tablet back on the sink. And once I get my pants off, I met with my final nemesis. My underwear. Even in the dressing room, I didn't take them off. I like my face and chest. I'm not particularly nervous as to what I look like down there. I'm more curious than anything. With half a shrug, along with the increasing anticipation of the hot shower, I go for it and slide them off. Everything looks fairly normal to me. Disregarding the white hair. One last curiosity remains. I know I'm not hard, but I take my thumb and measure down to the tip. Huh. I'm bigger than I remember. I chuckled to myself before I finally entered the shower I've longed for. The thought crosses my mind that due to my lack of pain, some other senses might be dulled. Thankfully, it's not the case with hot water. It feels absolutely wonderful. I could probably make it hotter, but even if I can't feel the pain, it wouldn't be good for my skin. Even so. Ah, hmm. I can practically feel the years melt away. I snort, sounding like old man Cooper thinks I am. And to be fair, Damien used to make fun of my lack of stamina even back then. I need to make him proud by getting my strength back up. 
I sigh before shaking my head. As much as I miss him, I need to stay positive. I'll figure out a way to back. I'll figure out a way back to him. One shower at a time. <laughs> I like this music. Kind of, kind of Mass Effecty. It takes a while to dry all of my hair after I exit the shower. That shampoo was also hard to rinse completely out, which makes sense. I should have used common sense and realized it was meant for canines. That's, that's what I was thinking. Like, dude, you're gonna be using canine shampoo. But it was worth the effort. My hair feels silky and soft. I wrap the towel around my waist and stand in front of the mirror. Not sure why I thought I'd look less weird with a head full of damp hair. I debate on using Cooper's for a brush, but decide against it. I'd rather not smell like him any more than I have to. After scooping up my clothes, I make my way back to the living room. Guess once, guess once I'm dry, I'll have to put these on again. Ugh, it's kind of gross. I don't know how cartoon characters can wear the same clothes every day without incident. I set them on the armrest of the couch. Uh, the least I can do is let them air out a bit. I plop my skinny butt back on the couch and take a, re take a breather. Man, that shower took a lot out of me, in a good way. It was a relaxing experience I desperately needed. I wish I had a hair tie or something, though. My hair is almost dry, but it's still a bit heavy from the water. Not to mention my hair is making a bit of a mess, which I should have thought of. I guess I, g I get up from the couch and, yep, the uh, back is a bit damp now. Oops. It'll probably dry by the time Cooper gets back. I wonder how he's doing. I hope he's okay, I grumble to myself. I guess I'm not so good at being independent yet after all. It takes about 20 minutes for me to dry off completely. Rubbing all of my hair with a towel was kind of exhausting, and now I look extra fluffy. The temptation of using that dog's brush grows. I let it go. My hair will settle at some point, hopefully. Not wanting to get into my sweaty clothes quite yet, I opt to just wear my underwear for a while. Now, Cooper's not going to get back for a long time, anyway. Once I give myself a good stretching session, I circle back to the remaining crates. The junk crate has been picked clean, with barely anything worthwhile in it. I'm both curious and skeptical about the rest. The thought crosses my mind that I could do Cooper's dishes for him now that the water's back on. The annoying thing is, I actually like doing dishes, but I'm not giving Cooper any reason to talk down to me anymore. So instead, I set out to sort through his trash. Wow, this really is a lose-lose situation. At the very least, there's a chance I could find something useful. Just a chance, though. I sigh loudly before picking a crate to sift through. To my surprise, it feels pretty light. I can move it around with ease and probably pour the contents out of the, out this time. It, curious, once more, I open the lid. Uh, huh. It's full of clothes. The clothes I don't think Cooper would wear. My curiosity fades, being replaced with worry. Dumping the contents out of the carpet, onto the carpet. I'm met with a mishmash of everything. There are even a few pairs of shoes. Okay, we're really going to have to talk about his hoarding habits. Uh, sure, most of the trash is organized from what I've seen, but why keep the trash to begin with? I sift through the articles of clothing. It's kind of creepy. There's several pairs of pants along with a few pairs of shorts. He even has underwear in here. What the fuck? Yeah, I've got some bad ideas about that. Yep. Wait a sec. Cooper said I, ha I could have whatever I find in these things. I'm sure that was some failed attempt at getting rid of some of this junk. But if there are actual clothes in here I could wear, then this just might be a treasure trove. How do you know those clothes don't belong to the previous people that he quote-unquote rescued? I hope Cooper's a good guy. I really do. All right, guys, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!